Winter has come. The world seems reborn under a blanket of snow meters thick. The snow hides every imperfection, crafting a landscape of pristine, untouched beauty. A world so smooth, so perfect, it feels almost otherworldly. Like a canvas, where nature exhibits its quite powerful artistry. But it's not just the sight that captures my heart in these frozen months. It's the profound silence of the polar night. The sun feels like a distant memory, but still paints the sky for some hours in hues of blue and magenta. Otherwise, darkness reigns this season. But when the night falls, it's anything but dark. The sky comes alive with the dance of the auroras. Vibrant, ethereal streams of green and pink. A spectacle more colorful than the day. In these moments, we often gather around the campfire, while the world outside is a realm of darkness. But in our circle of warmth, it's a season of coziness, reflection, and togetherness. This is winter in the north, harsh but beautiful beyond measure, full of contrasts and surprises. A season that asks for nothing but to be felt, to be experienced, and to be lived. After spending a month preparing in Germany, the urge to head north became harder to ignore again. It was time to leave our trusty van behind for her well-deserved winter hibernation and switch to our other car, which is better suited for the challenges of the cold. Our journey took us through Germany, then across to southern Sweden. As we ventured further north, the transformation was mesmerizing. The world gradually changed into a winter wonderland, with each kilometer bringing more snow, blanketing the earth in white. We made a brief stop in Stockholm, to prepare our car for the winter roads ahead. We fitted it with spikes, an essential for the icy roads up north. While there, the weather was perfect, inviting us for a day-long stroll through the charming streets of Stockholm, soaking in its beauty and the crisp, clear air. For so long, we had dreamt of spending an entire winter in the north, really being able to immerse ourselves. That year, this dream was no longer just imagination. It was becoming our reality, unfolding with each kilometer we drove towards the Arctic. The fading daylight and the growing amount of snow were a clear sign that we are on our right way. Leaving Stockholm, we took an overnight ferry bound for Turku in southern Finland. In Turku, I drove our car onto a train, a new experience in itself. We had our own cozy cabin, small but enough, and a window where we watched the frosty landscape pass by until it got too dark. Fourteen or so hours later, the train reached its end, and we were above the Arctic Circle in Rovaniemi, Finnish Lapland. But the journey wasn't over yet. We had plans to drive a few more hours eastwards, towards Kusamo. Good friends of ours lived there, and we had long been looking forward to celebrating Christmas with them. We woke up the next morning in Eva's and Miko's beautiful home, nestled somewhere in a forest that seemed to stretch into infinity. The complete silence was only broken by the soft drift of snow and the wind in the treetops. Breathing in the fresh air, I found myself mesmerized by this muted, serene world around us. Odin was full of joy to reunite with Lily again. They ran and plowed through the snow, enjoying their lives. We went out for a walk to the forest. Our path led us up a small mountain, where an overlook offered us a vast view of the icy landscape below. It stretched out in an endless shades of white and grey, a minimalist view.
We continued hiking and arrived at a frozen cabin perched onto the top of a hill. It was entirely covered in ice, perfectly camouflaged in this landscape. Inside we found shelter from the cold and had a warm cup of tea. After some time we stepped back into the cold and the sky was still grey, the clouds thick and slowly it just got dark. With no clearing in sight, we decided to return to Eva's home, light a fire and warm up again. On our way back, some Siberian jays appeared among the trees and their whistle added a touch of beauty to the hike down. Christmas Day arrived at Eva and Miko's home. Around their table we shared stories, had traditional Finnish food and simply enjoyed time together. It was a day less about the festivities and more about cherishing the simple joy of being together. The morning of the 25th awaited for us with a Christmas walk. We set out for a nearby national park and arrived at the car park just as the blue hour started casting its glow. The air was freezing cold, but the beauty of the winter forest was a spectacle with its snow-laden trees looking like frozen giants. Our journey began in the valley with our plan to reach a hill in the heart of the park by sunrise. As we hiked upwards, a faint layer of fog wrapped around the trees, enhancing the beauty of the blue hour. It felt almost like walking through a dream. Reaching the hilltop, we emerged above the fog. The sun was on the brink of rising for briefly half an hour, but it already painted the sky and landscape in soft pastel hues. The moment the first rays came above the horizon, the world transformed. A warm reddish glow lit up everything in a beautiful tone, while the sky shifted to a deep magenta tone. This brief moment of sunlight warmed our faces, making us forget the biting cold. It was a view so stunning, with colors unlike anything I have seen before. Are you cold? Despite the freezing temperatures, this day was one of my favorites ever. There's something special about hiking in such a unique and enchanting landscape, especially when sharing the time with the right people. Exhilarated, yet tired and cold, we made our way back to the cabin to warm up and rest, already planning the next hike in this winter wonderland. The next hike began in darkness. 
We had been waiting for quite a while, and after days of snowstorms and grey landscape, New Year's Day presented us with the perfect weather window, so our spirits were high after all these days sitting out. With heavy backpacks and pulks loaded with gear, we ventured into the national park, with the moon casting a guiding light over our path. Walking among the frozen trees in this ethereal light, surrounded by an almost otherworldly silence, felt completely out of this world. reached the spot to pitch our tents by midnight and I was looking so much forward to have a warm cup of tea in the comfiness of my sleeping bag. The next morning greeted us early, with a clear sky painted in incredible colors. It was only then I fully realized the beauty of our camping spot. We went on hiking through waist-deep snow towards an outlook on a hill, while the colors of dawn shifted from deep blues to soft pastels. As we reached the summit, the sun gently lit up the landscape around us, turning everything into a perfect picture. We decided to descend back to camp as the wind began to pick up, bringing an even more freezing cold. The day had been filled with beautiful colors, from the soft and rich blues of dawn to the enchanting pastels of the morning and back to blue hour. Later that day we packed our gear together and warmed up in a wilderness hut in front of a fireplace before hiking back to the cars. And again, the beauty of the north simply overwhelmed us, making us forget the earlier week of grey weather and ice-cold feet. As our time came to an end, we packed our car again to head further north. Thank you, Eva and Miko, for sharing this incredible adventure with us. Kitos. Our journey continued, with our route winding along icy roads, cutting through muted snow-covered forests. We 
draw farther north, entering the region of the polar night, where the sun no longer made it above the horizon. Despite the longer nights and darkness, the brief daylight we experienced was incredibly beautiful. The full moon casted a surreal glow on the frozen landscape below, painting everything in soft colors set against the deep colors of the sky. of this frozen world, we stumbled upon a sight, both unexpected and captivating. A small river defying the minus 30 degrees Celsius temperature, unfrozen and still flowing. Amidst this icy place was a group of swans, floating gracefully and making a stark contrast to the harsh environment. Our route eventually led us to Monio, the last stop before we crossed the border into Sweden. Arriving in Sweden, we slowly drove to the beauty of Swedish Lapland. After a couple of cold plunges into frozen rivers later, we reached a cabin that seemed as if it had come right out of a fairy tale. secluded and serene. The cabin was located next to an island in the midst of a vast frozen lake. A little sanctuary of silence and calm, where the only sound was the soft whispers of wind moving the snow around us and blowing through the nearby trees. The isolation, especially being on a frozen lake, was an unusual experience, yet it was one we quickly found to love, and so did Odin. This peaceful moment was briefly interrupted by a majestic sight, a herd of hundreds of reindeers passing by our cabin. So far north, the sun never rose, and we only had about two hours of daylight each day. But these slow days were just what we needed. Time seemed to slow down here, the days were marked by coziness and tranquility, starting them all with a hot cup of coffee and a view to the vastness of this place. we were not stuck here, the stunning mountain area of eastern Swedish Lapland awaited us. And after the morning coffee, the days continued with our favorite way to travel back to the village. A brisk ride on a snowmobile, each trip kind of an adventure in itself. The short days were an invitation to climb every little mountain peak we could find, chasing the glimpses of the sun and overlooking the endless forests. And with the long nights came a spectacular bonus, the northern lights. Our friend and guide Magnus, probably the best aurora guide that I know, studying the maps and instruments all day long, led us to the best locations possible. And even now, I still can't wrap my head around this evening. I don't remember how often I had to pinch myself. 
the northern lights danced across the sky in a vivid spectacle of green, purple and even red colors, sometimes moving so fast that it was hard to capture them and often made me put away the camera and just stare into the sky. This real-time footage hardly does justice to the speed and magnificence of their movement. After hours of gazing into the sky, the cold crept into our bones and we returned to the cabin. We cuddled up in our bed, continuing to watch the mesmerizing show from the warmth underneath our blankets until we fell asleep. The end of a truly magical night. The final day of our time in Sweden began with a special event. It was the day when the sun would finally peak above the horizon but only for a fleeting moment. We set off on our snowmobiles, aiming for a mountain that promised open views. As we left the lake, the sky was a clear canvas, slowly being brushed with warmer colors. We navigated through the frozen forest and caught our first glimpse of the sun, a beautiful sight after days of polar night. Reaching the summit, we found ourselves in a pristine snow-covered wilderness that felt like a hidden gem in the wilds of Swedish Lapland, with in distance reindeers and moose. finale to our time in Sweden, reminding us of the countless wonders we had seen in the last weeks. We took the road to the northernmost end of Sweden, passing into Norway. As we drove, the landscape changed, with snow-covered mountains rising majestically around us. On these roads, we often found ourselves alone, with only our companions being the mountains and occasional herds of reindeer. Crossing the border into Norway, we tried to keep our spirits high, and Odin's too as we drove through the darkness. <laughs> yeah. 
Our destination was Henningswehr, a beautiful village where we paused our journey for a few days. Being back by the ocean, surrounded by mountains, was a comforting and familiar feeling. It was the perfect setting to unwind. In the next episode, we will settle in a small cabin by the ocean. There we will spend the following three months, immersing ourselves in the stunning winter wonderland of this unique and breathtaking part of the world, the Lofoten Islands. Mm -hmm.